SPAD is more than so too. Um, you know, we are an international uh, platform here, and it will be good one day to hear people praying in Swahili, praying in Chichewa, praying in Tsonga, praying in all our native languages. Don't be ashamed. If you want to pray in your native language, please do so. God understands. Muruti Lesedi. This is your time. This is your time. And to those who are joining us for the very first time, immediately after Muruti Lesedi, we will be opening it up for our testimonies, our Thanksgiving testimonies. So don't leave the platform immediately after devotion. Over to you, Muruti. Thank you very much, uh, Elder, Elder Izzy. Uh, it was also good to, to, to hear Sister Mshatama. We have not talked in a long, long time. Um, please remain blessed, Sister. And thank you for the privilege. Uh, uh, rather easy of serving. And it has been a blessing to me. Uh, it was difficult for me to wake up around this time. And, uh, but I see that it is, it, it's, it's a habit for me because I just wake up with no problem. I no longer rely upon my, my, my clock or anything. Uh, it, it explains why people, even after this, they linger longer. Uh, but, but I want to believe that there is, there is a blessing that is accompanied by seeking the Lord very early in the morning, before you talk to people, before you do your work, before you do any other thing, you talk to him, you listen to him. And thank you for the, for the privilege. Thank you, Lord, for allowing you and the brothers and the sisters to initiate this ministry so that we can be, we can be blessed. This morning, this morning, I want to share on a topic, um, on a topic of grace, but I want us to look at grace in terms of the future, how grace will, will turn out. The, 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 topic is, the topic is going to be great grace, the, 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 God's amazing grace has succeeded. I want to put it that way. I want to put it in the past. I want to go to the future and look at the, the project of grace and, and, and say it has succeeded based on what we are going to be, to be doing and the passages that we'll be reading. I want to suggest that this project of amazing grace has succeeded. I'm looking at it from future. Um, to begin our meeting this morning, I would like us to read a passage. I'd like us to read a passage in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter um, Chapter 53, this is the passage that you are all familiar with. God revealed to Isaiah the ministry of Jesus Christ, not only the ministry of Jesus Christ, but how this ministry will succeed. Uh, not only how it will succeed, even the details, how uh, the people that are going to benefit from this ministry and where it will end at. I'm reading Isaiah chapter 53, but I'm reading it in a, in a clear word version. I've chosen this version for the sake of clarity this morning. Isaiah 53, I'm going to read verses 9, 10, and 11. After that, then we will get to, to uh, the, the, the message of today. Uh, verse 9 says, uh, I'm reading Isaiah chapter 53, verses 9, 10, and 11. I'm, I'm starting with 9. He was buried without honor as if he were a sinner. A rich man donated a grave for him. He had done nothing violent, neither was deceit found in his mouth. Verse 10, it was the will of the Lord for him to die. And though God made him to be an offering for our sins, he will rise again and complete what God wants him to do. He will see the fruit of his labor and his offering offspring will live forever. Verse 11, he will suffer many things, but then have fullness of joy. He will know that what he did was not in vain. He will see the fruit of his life and be satisfied. By the knowledge of him, many will be justified, for he will bear the iniquities of them all. May God continue to bless the reading of his word and may he cause it to, to be planted and germinate in our hearts. And later on the harvest 
should, should that be of saving us into the kingdom. May God bless us uh, all. Uh, let me remove this passage so that, so that we can start reflecting on this passage. I want to suggest to us that um, the way God works, the way he works, he always begins with the end in mind. He, when he tells a story, when he relates a story, he always, he always shows you the, the end of the story. Uh, let, let, me, let me use an illustration for this. If you were to ask God to share a boxing match, he will begin with round number 12. He will say, you, you are fighting against the devil. Uh, you have your corner, he, ha he has his corner. He has his supporters, you have your own supporters. Heaven is standing with you in your corner. They are giving you, they are strengthening you for, for the match. They are with you. They are your corner. They are, they are giving you advices on how to be victorious in this match. And when God relates the match, he will, he will show you round number 12. In round number 12, you are jumping, you are happy, and the devil is lying there. He is not, uh, they are trying to attend to him because you have given him a powerful punch. You are victorious. Your corner is, has lifted you up and they are happy with you and everyone is happy. And, 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 and God says to you, this is how the match will end. This is round number 12. And, and you look in round number 12, you see yourself victorious. And God says, now let's go to round number one so that we can continue with the match. In round number one, he shows you the devil beating you up. You get terrible uppercuts. You, he, he gives you terrible punches. Sometimes they, they cause you to, 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 to even to fall. And, and, and while you are falling there, while the reverie is counting and, and God comes and whispers to you, don't forget, don't forget round number 12, get up, stand up. And you stand up because you saw round number 12 and, and, and he beats you up and he, uh, you see Corona, you see this, you lose your loved ones, you see sicknesses, cancer, uh, children under substance abuse, you see so many things and, 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 and by that he knocks you down and, 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 and you're lying there, you're, you're bleeding and, and you're dragging yourself and God comes and he whispers to you and says, don't forget round number 12, it is yours. And you get up, you fight, you fight because you know the victory. You have seen the end. You, you are now moving towards the future and you have seen the future and you know you are moving towards victory. This is how God has been working with us. Now, when he reveals his truth, the passage that we have read, if you notice, John uh, uh, Isaiah saw a vision of Jesus Christ coming to this earth carrying our sins, suffering, and God being, God the Father being very much active, uh, uh, choosing Jesus Christ to be our sacrifice and allowing him to bear our iniquities. And, 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 and the passage says, he will see the travail of his soul and, and he will be happy because there will be, the mission will become accomplished. And the passage says, many, will be saved many will be saved now i want to i want us to know that this this amazing grace has succeeded i'm looking at it from the future it has succeeded i've read in the i've seen the last round of the match of the match uh, god revealed to Isaiah where we will end up at He saw many being saved. I promise you, this mission of grace has succeeded. Has succeeded. But let's let's follow. Let's follow. Let's let, now we know the end of the story. Actually, we even know where we will be staying. We even know uh, earlier this week we talked about that. We read a passage, uh, Revelation chapter fifteen, verse five, where God. Uh, Revelation 15 verse 3, where God will call us and say, uh, 
I'll, I'll explain to you why I allowed those things to happen, why I allow this and that in your life to happen. And, and the passage says, we're going to stand up, all of us, after hearing the reasons why he allowed that to happen, all of us are going to stand up and say, just and true are your ways, O oh God. You have been right. You have been perfect. You have been wise in handling our cases. Our cases could not have been handled any better than the way you have handled them. Even the dark spots of our lives, where we felt God had abandoned us, when we see how close he was, we are going to say just and true are your ways, O oh God. Now, the book of Matthew mentions, mentions that um, uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, uh, Jesus Christ, uh, being recorded by Matthew, says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Jesus Christ is, pre is predicting, he's saying, this gospel will be preached. Remember, he himself was seen by Isaiah before he came to this world. God revealed to Isaiah that Jesus Christ would come. He will bear our sins. He will be our substitute, but many will be saved after that. And Christ came in the New Testament and he's preaching the same gospel. He's also making a prediction. He's saying, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the world as a witness to all the nations. And then the end will come. Now, just before he departed, just before he departed, after he resurrected, just before he ascended, he was crucified, he resurrected, and he gave a last speech to his disciples. And just before he left, he said to them, this is now Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He says, he, he, he gives them a promise. He says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all, in all Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. He's actually giving them an itinerary of the gospel. He's giving them the outline of the gospel. He says to them, I want you to begin your ministry, the preaching, when the Holy Spirit has finally come to you, I want you to leave where you are, go to Jerusalem. When you, had, when, when you have done preaching in Jerusalem, go to Judea and then move to Samaria and then go throughout the world. And, and, and later on, Paul, who was also fighting against the gospel, later on when God, Paul had joined the gospel, John, uh, Paul would make, a comment, would make a comment in his letter to the church of Col Colossae. Uh, Colossians 1 verse 23, uh, uh, this is what Paul says. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, uh, and are not moved away from the hope, of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister. Paul is saying here, he's giving them, he's saying to them, I want you to remain steadfast in your faith. I want you to be grounded in your faith. And as you move on, holding on to this hope which you received from the gospel, then he then he adds another statement. He says, the gospel which was preached to every creature under heaven. Back then in the first century, Paul was beginning to say, the way we have worked, remember, this is the church in Colossae. Uh, Jesus had said, begin in Jerusalem, go to Judea and go to Samaria, then go throughout to the world. Now, Colossae, the church of the Colossians was part of the world because it was not, it's not in Israel, it's in Asia Minor in the biblical times or in Turkey today, that church, the, 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 the place Colossae, the church Colossae, if you were to use the language of today, it's in Turkey. When Paul wrote this message saying the gospel has reached every creature under heaven, Paul was referring to the world that he understood. According to him, we have done what we could. The gospel has, has reached so many places. And, and John, John would mention something in the book of Revelation. And I want us to read this. John is reflecting on the fruits of the gospel. Paul, on the other side, is saying the gospel has reached the world. Now, John is given a vision, a vision of 
uh, events that will take place after the second coming of Jesus Christ. And, and, and this is now in Revelation chapter 7 from verse 9 to verse 10. This is what John says. After these things, I looked and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. Now notice. John, John sees uh, in his vision, he saw a great multitude which could not be numbered. Now I want to, before I, I proceed with this passage, I want to affirm to us this morning that this project of amazing grace has succeeded. John saw the multitudes that could not be numbered drawn from all the nations. Earlier on, Brother Izzy mentioned that we come from different nations. Notice the pas what the passage says. It says uh, the, a great multitude that could not be numbered, drawn from all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, and they are clothed with white robes, and they are carrying palm branches in their hands. Now, verse 10 says, and crying out with a loud voice saying, now these are the, 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 the a great multitude is singing, a great cry, crying out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. Um, and, and later on, if one wants to ask a question, if one wants to ask a question, where do these people come from? Where do these people come from? And John would even answer his own question. He talks about a great multitude that will obey the gospel. Now he mentions that in, in, in Revelation chapter 14. And, and John says, then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue and people. Again, the gospel is intended to go to everyone, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. Now the question is, where do this great multitude that cannot be numbered, where, how did they make their way to the throne of God? Because they obeyed the gospel because they obey the gospel. And this has not happened. Standing before the throne has not happened. It's still in future. What is taking place now, the grace is still operational. Jesus Christ is still in the business of saving souls. But the Bible has revealed the future. We know that as we are listening now, as we are breaking the word of life, we are going, all of us, I believe, and I pray that all of us, all of us should be part of the fulfillment of that vision, where we would be wearing white garments, carrying palm branches in our hands, standing in front of the throne of God, the Father, and that, that of the Lamb, and singing, saying, salvation belongs to our God. I pray that that prophecy will be fulfilled. I pray that each one of us today will be part of that, of that uh, multitude that cannot be numbered. Now, it's a big group, a multitude. These are millions and millions or even billions. To me, it says this mission of grace, of amazing grace has succeeded. If I'm looking at it from the future, but if I'm looking at it from now into the future, I will say this mission will succeed. If I go into the future, according to the scripture and look at it from, this, from, from the future, I will say this amazing grace project has succeeded. And if you ask, how do I know? I was told by John, John saw a multitude that could not be numbered standing in front of the throne of God. Now, where will God house these millions, people that cannot be counted? Where will he house them? Now, remember when Jesus Christ, just before he departed, 
John 14, verse 1 to 3, he said to these disciples, I don't want your hearts to be troubled. I want you to believe in God and also believe in me because in my father's house, I'm, there are so many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, but now I'm leaving. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and receive you to myself so that wherever I am, you will be also. Notice the promise. I'm going, there are mansions in the, already there are, there's, a, there's, there's a space, but because I'm expecting uh, multitudes that cannot be numbered, because I'm expecting that this, this project of amazing grace, I'm expecting it to be successful. And I know you are going to make sure that through the Holy Spirit, while I'm away preparing the places, I will be preparing the places. You will be preparing the people. I will be preparing the place, but I will return. And when I return, I will bring you to myself together with those that you would have prepared so that I can be with you always. Now, Christ has gone to prepare the places for us. He's preparing a venue for us. He's preparing uh, the new Jerusalem for the multitudes. Now, if you go to the book of Revelation and, 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 and hear a little bit about this venue and hear a little bit and listen to what John has to say about this venue. If you read uh, Revelation chapter 21, verse 10, uh, 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 John writes and he says, then with the help of the spirit, he took me to the top of a very high mountain. There he showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down from God in heaven. Now, John was given a glimpse of this venue which Christ is preparing. Remember, he left, just before he left, he said to his disciples, I'm leaving, I'm going to prepare a place. You remain preparing the people for the places. And, 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 and John was given a glimpse of this venue, of this place. And, and, and the, the Holy Spirit led him to that place. And they, they, they put him at a, at, at, a, at a strategic place on, uh, at the very top of the mountain. He sat there and they showed him the city. And, and, and he saw this beautiful, he calls it a holy city. And, and, and while he was looking, he noticed that it is a city, it is huge but it is portable, it can move, it can move. He said he, he said he saw it moving from heaven, going to the earth. In other words, John was shown a venue, a venue which is being prepared for the multitudes that cannot be numbered. But now this venue is so big, it can accommodate everyone. But lo and behold, something that is miraculous. You can move the city from wherever, you can move it to any place that you want to move it to. Now, if you continue with the book of, Re please at your spare time, read Revelation 21 and, and, and get the details of this venue. Now, when we bring it to a close, there is something special apart from the venue. Apart from the venue, I'm looking forward for the venue, to that venue, because in that venue, I'm told God the Father lives in that venue. I'm told the Lamb, according to the passages, the Lamb is there, the Holy Spirit. I'm, I, I want to see these people who have been working for myself. I want to see this, this Trinity. I want to see the angel. I even want to see the angel that I was giving him or her a problem because I know I'm a wayward child. God has assigned me angels. Many times I would be doing my own, I would be stubborn. I want to see these angels that were so persevering in working for me, in protecting me. I'm looking forward to see Jesus. I'm looking forward to see, but, but there's a promise, Revelation 22, verse three and four. I want us to read this promise. It says, Revelation 22, three and four, God's curse will no longer be on the people of that city. God is promising here that curse, what is curse? Curse was brought about by sin. He's, he's saying curse or anything that is the result of sin, even sin itself will not be in the new, in the, in the new Jerusalem. God's curse will no longer be on the people of that city. He and the lamb will be seated there on their thrones and its people will worship him. Again, the thrones, 
uh, heaven is a kingdom. Uh, we have thrones there. It's not a republic. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, it, it's a kingdom of God. Verse four. Now I want you to notice verse four, and we will see him face to face. God's name will be written on their forehead, on the foreheads of, of the people. I'm looking forward to seeing the, the face of Jesus. I'm looking forward to seeing the face of God. The book of Genesis mentions that when Adam and Eve committed sin, they lost a privilege of communing with God, a privilege of seeing God face to face. They lost that because of the entrance of sin. But when we have been restored, when we have been changed in the twinkle of an eye, when we have been translated, when we are now standing in front of the throne, when we are now in the venue that has been prepared for us. Here's the promise, we will see his face. I'm looking forward to seeing the face of Jesus. I'm looking forward to seeing the face of God. And may God bless us as we make an appointment. I want us to make an appointment, all of us, to meet by the throne so that we can behold that face. We can see the face of the Father. We can see the face of Jesus Christ. We can see the Holy Spirit. We can see the angels that have been protecting us. We can see and commune with God. And again, again, the project of grace has succeeded because John saw you and I standing before the throne, singing, wearing white garments, being ushered into, into the kingdom. And the last treat is that of seeing the face of the Father. May God bless us. May he keep us faithful until we meet that appointment. Amen. Amen and amen, Muruti. Just offer a prayer for us, please. Okay. Father, we... We want to thank you, Lord, for your word. While we are going through uh, difficult times, times that we always share in our prayer, in the prayer breakup groups, and Father, where we plead for your mercy for our children, for our families, for our friends, for our loved ones, where we plead, where we wrestle with you, where we even say, Lord, I will not let you go until you bless us, until you answer this question. And Lord, we know that this is not the end of the story. One day, when everything has, I mean, where, the, where, the, where, where we have been changed, when you would have created us anew, we will see your face. And I pray that each one of us today, together with our loved ones, together with those that we have prayed for, together with those that we would have worked for at that time, I pray that all of us should meet by the throne so that we can see the face of God. Until then, I pray, Father, that we remain faithful through the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen, Muruti.